Welcome back to another Matty Ice Reviews. And tonight, guys, we are continuing as seen on TV reviews. We will be taking a look at the Blue Diamond Pan. This is a ceramic coated pan. It's aluminum. And this blue diamond thing you can see on here, it's shiny, it's blue. This is supposed to help not stick things to it as you cook. And it's supposed to you only need a little oil and butter as you cook. And this finish is supposed to last a long time. It's dishwasher safe. They say it's warp free. And it's not going to have any toxic, you know, chemicals in it. It doesn't have any PFSA, PFAS, PFOA, lead or cadmium in this coating. So that's all good news and it's not Teflon based. We don't have to worry about it scratching up and releasing Teflon to our food and potentially being a hazard that way. Okay, so you can bake this in the oven, you can use it on the stove top. Today we're just going to try it on the stove top and see how it does. Alright guys, here's another look at some of the things this is claiming. Here's that five times harder coating. Uh, metal utensils won't scratch this. That's good news. You don't just have to use plastic. It claims that it lasts 10 times longer than everything else, and it's a four times heat treated transfer. So this is supposed to evenly heat. I kind of like the design on the bottom as we open this up, and this is the 10 inch fry pan version. Now I did get this on sale. This was only, I think like $15, where it's normally 20. I kind of like the bottom, it looks very nice. And here's a look inside the actual pan. It's very shiny and sparkly. Reminds me of like that midnight blue color they used to make for GM cars. One thing I'm worried about though, this handle's metal. It says the handle will not transfer heat to you and burn you. But that's just a metal shank guys, I don't know about that. Okay, so I've already cleaned this up. All you have to do is wash with a little soap and water if you want to. You can also throw it in your dishwasher, it is dishwasher safe. So what we're going to be cooking in here today is going to be some eggs, cheese, and then we're going to do a little protein. We're going to do a little shrimp. We're not going to do our usual thing where we try and burn chocolate on here because I think uh, if it can handle cheese, eggs, and some shrimp will be good. Now it does say to always use a little bit of oil or butter in here as you cook. Not olive oil though. You're not supposed to use olive oil in this pan because it could uh, carbonize on here because of its smoke point, and then that'll leave a film on here that things will stick to. So we're just going to grab some butter, regular butter, not parquet or anything like that, toss it in the pan and heat it up, and then we'll start uh, trying to melt some, you know, we'll try, we'll, we'll try cheese first. Let's do cheese first. Okay, it didn't say how much butter, so I've just got a very thin pad of butter on there, and we're going to turn this on. Now remember, it does say to use low to medium heat, when cooking, so we're going to use medium heat, and then we're going to see how this thing does. Okay, it's been about a minute. You can see the butter in the middle is melting, and the one on the end is actually melting too. It's it's not, you know, not doing its job, but that butter is pretty well melted. I mean, I can move this around on here and I get a nice little coating. That was more than enough butter for this. If this does not work now and it's got problems and just to show you what's going on heat wise I did upgrade and I got myself you might remember this from the wish video this is a digital heat thermometer so if I point this at the pan it'll tell me how hot the pans getting dead center we're about 134 degrees Fahrenheit at the edges we're actually hotter we're getting about 138 this edge is slightly off the burner and it's still at about 132 the side over here, 132, and then the corner down here is the coldest. It's heating up though. It keeps going 127, 125, so it's hot, but it's not even. Look at the middle. The middle is 140, out to the edge again, that's a 20 degree difference. So it, it's heating, but I don't know if this is any better than a regular pan. Look at the top of that, it's already at 150. We're just gonna put some cheese in there. We're gonna see what happens. Cheese is already pretty oily, so we probably didn't need the butter in there. But the cheese, 70 some degrees to start with. The melting cheese is already hitting the, the hundreds. It's pretty cool. All right, let's melt the cheese on here and see what happens. All right, guys, as you can see, we've got some bubbling cheese right here. So the cheese is at the point where it's hot enough. Let's take a look at the pan real quick. 
we're hitting we're hitting the 250s right now so this is hot enough to start really cooking stuff and making progress cheese itself is hitting 200 degrees so right there okay so let's uh let's grab our spatula and see how easily this che oh, now look at that it just picks right up and then moves around it doesn't stick at all it i mean look at that it's just sliding and there's no cheese residue left or anything all right this has been on for like three minutes now and this cheese is still maintaining good temperature it's like 210 the pan is hit is still at 250, 240. We haven't really adjusted the temperature at all. That side's a little bit cooler, 270. So we do have some hot spots. So I don't necessarily know that this is maintaining even heating around the whole pan. And just for your information, this handle at the base close to the pan is at 100. And further up it's at 90. And at the edge it's at 83 and it's climbing. If I hold it right now, it's warm, but if I get close to the pan, it's uncomfortable. So this uh, this handle is not exactly the best handle, but even when that's been going for a while, and we can see all the fat separating, or the oil separating from the uh, cheese, it still slides around easily. It doesn't take a lot to move it around. Alright guys, cheese has been on there for six minutes now, and it's starting to brown up. It's lost its orange color, and it's brown, and it is hanging together more now. It's still... Look at that. It, you can push it wherever you want in this pan. It's not sticking. Okay. I call that one a win. We're going to take this off and let's see how hot it is right now. About 300 degrees on that side. 285 there. And that one's at 230. And the bottom edge, 280. Very center of the cheese, about 230 right now. Handle, 125 degrees at the base. Mid handle, we're at about 95 degrees. End of the handle, we're still about 84 degrees. So, it's when you hold it, it's warm. It does not feel like it's cool. So, let's uh, take this cheese off of here. And then we will clean her up and see how easy she cleans. Alright guys, that's the pan after just a little soap and water in there. And I do have a couple little droplets of water in there still. So they'll, they'll cook off in our next test. But it came clean very easily, and I used Scrub Daddy on it and a little bit of Dawn dish soap, and it came right clean. And then here's our cheese. Look at that. Nice and brown and crispy. Good texture. Still slightly mushy. Oh, that is so good when it's like that. Okay, so this time, instead of using butter, we're going to try some good old-fashioned canola oil spray. Now, it doesn't tell you what type of oil to use, but like we said, I think olive oil is a mistake based on what I know of these type of pans. So, let's give this just quick spray like I would any other pan that I was going to cook something on. Okay, we're going to let that heat up, and then we're going to put our egg on there. Okay, so we'll use our easy cracker, and we'll put an egg right in the middle of this. There we go. Easy cracker. Okay, and already, see this egg is already starting to whiten up, and it's it's not sticking. Look at that. We can flip it up, and it's not even moving, like, to stick to the pan. See? It just pulls right away. It's, it's doing good so far with just some canola oil spray on there. All right, so the egg's set up pretty good right now. It's been on for about a minute and a half, so let's see. We're at about 240, 236. 206 and 230 see it's it's not as even as they claim it is okay let's try something that they show in the commercial it's tilting the egg around the pan and it just slides whoa look at that oh my god that is so cool the egg is just sliding in the pan i can even like make it go around the edge look at that that's actually really neat i mean you can do that with a well-oiled pan too but that's actually just kind of fun and I do enjoy the color of this pan. It's a very pleasing color. Okay, so we know the egg's not sticking. Let's get our spatula under there. And let's give it a... Ooh, kind of slipped off there. Let's flip her over. See, the bottom's not even burned. It's just nicely white all over. Normally what I find out when I cook these is I get burning around the edges because I'll leave it over too long and then 
There we go, but this one's doing pretty good. Handle, now 115 degrees at the bottom, 90 at the middle again, 82 at the top. So it is heating up. Okay, let's chop her open. Let's spill out that yolk. Let's see if the yolk will give this trouble, because yolk's got a lot of fat and cholesterol in it. Ah, it's cooking instantly. And look, it's sliding around with it. It's not even sticking. Okay, that one's a win too. Let's get this egg off and let's go on to our final test. Alright guys, that's the pan after cleaning it. Um, came off very easily again. I kind of think I like the butter a little bit better for cooking. Uh, the canola spray is fine, but... Let's put another pat of butter on there and let's move on to our final test. So let's get this butter working all around in here. Nice coating. Here's our little shrimpy. We got shrimp number one. It'll go up top. Shrimp number two on that side and shrimp number three can hang out right there. Oh yeah, let's get them shrimp. Them shrimpies. Oh yeah, look at them shrimp. Those shrimp is cooking. Oh yeah. We'll see if we can't get those to cook up a little bit in here. Alright guys, these shrimp have been cooking on here for about two minutes. And they're still very easy to move around in the pan. I've switched to a fork. I don't have a metal spatula. So I guess this is the best I could use to simulate a metal, you know, utensil. To test this finish. We'll go ahead and just rub it on here a whole bunch of times. There's something that just feels so wrong about doing that to this pan. I mean, because you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to just be gentle with your pans. But these ones, I guess, we can be as rough as we want. So let's get this shrimp to flip. There we go. Nice little flimp, flipperooski on that one. Another little flipperoo. Let's get you. Come on. There we go. So we got them in our different heat zones. Let's check the heat real quick. Top of the pan, 237. Other part of the pan, 254. Bottom, 237. Dead center, 256. So it's, a, it's not too bad. Bottom of the handle, 95 degrees. Mid, 91. Top, 82. Alright guys, it's been about 7 minutes. As you can see, the shrimp are a little bit brown on this side, that side, that side. We do have uh, some browning of the butter, and I'm imagining this is little chunks of the shrimp too in here. So let's uh, let's move these around, see if they still they still move around just fine. I flipped them a couple times. You can shake them around like that. We can pick up the pan and tilt the shrimp wherever we want to. These, I'd be happy-ish with eating them. I mean, you get a nice little little char factor to them. Yeah, those look perfectly fine. All right. Let's take these off and let's see if this pan will clean now. Okay, shrimp came perfectly clean. Look at that. It looks brand new. So, uh, I figured before we uh, gave this one some final thoughts, I thought, why not? You now, it says that it can stand up to metal utensils. So, I wonder what would happen if we took some metal utensils and just rubbed them on here. Um, I didn't see anything after I rubbed that fork on there a couple times, but that had butter in it. So we're just going to take our fork and oh god, it is horrific. Yeah, you know, you never know when you'd be using metal utensils. I mean, I mean, if you use what's available. You, oh, that still has some butter on it. Gross. We use whatever's available. You know, sometimes the kids are screaming in the background, the phone's ringing. Kids are yelling, ah, where do babies come from? You know, ah, the laundry room's on fire. They always need something. But this is, let's, let's put a little, this is a little wire mesh kind of strainer. Let's rub that on there a couple times. It's not the toughest thing in the world, but it does have a nice edge on it. And I'm not trying to, like, gouge this thing, but I want to see if it can stand up to some abuse. Okay. Let's try this one too. This is a meat hammer. 
Ooh, that one's abrasive, I can feel it. Okay, so we hit it a couple times. Let's see if it cleans up. All right, guys, here's the metal pan close up. And there's no scratch marks from the forks or that wire, but unfortunately, I want a little bit zealous with that hammer. You see, I got a couple little... Let's get you close. There are some chips in the finish, and if you run your finger over them, you can feel them. So, it's not impervious. You shouldn't be beating this with a meat hammer by any means, but if you use a metal fork or a metal spatula on it, you probably won't hurt it, but I'd have to imagine if you had like a spatula and you really were digging at this thing, you would cause the finish to come off. The Blue Diamond Pan. I think Blue Diamond made a good product. I do like the look and the feel of it. As you can see, I got some water in there from washing it. I think it does a decent job. It heats up fairly evenly. It's, and the pan does pretty well with oil and butter in it, but what pan doesn't really? I don't know if it's that more, you know, that much more amazing than any good Teflon or stainless steel pan that's been seasoned properly. So, it does do a good job of cooking things. I do like the look of it, but uh, as far as the scratch resistant goes, the coating is not as hard as they're making you believe. The coating is a good ceramic type coating, but it's not full ceramic in my opinion. As you saw, we did damage it slightly when we hit it with that meat hammer. So while the pan does its job accordingly, it's not the best pan you've ever used. And there's a reason you see them on clearance. They're at Ollie's, they're at Big Lots. They're not an amazing product. They're on the same level as the red copper pans. So with that in mind, I'd have to give this pan like a six, six and a half out of 10. It does a good job, but it's not the most amazing pan you're ever going to use. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. We'll catch you next time. Have a good night.